Hey, everybody, and welcome. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Fork Silver Knives, for this opportunity. I really do love your meal planner. I use it. And today I'm going to make Thanksgiving dinner because I'm really having my Thanksgiving tonight because I figure if I got to do all this cooking, why not invite 16 people over and call it Thanksgiving? So I'm hoping to get these all done in an hour and we'll see. So the first thing I want to do is get the cake started. This is a polenta cake. It's an apple polenta cake with a cherry compote. And so what I've done, and I recommend you do this, whether it's Thanksgiving or not, it's called mise en place. It's where you get all your ingredients together that you're going to be used, using in whatever you're making and preferably measure them out. It just makes cooking so much easier. And you can do a lot of steps in advance and I'll tell you which ones I've done in advance as we get to that part. So in my bowl right here, I have my polenta. And of course you'll have free access to these recipes, whether you join the meal planner or not. I've already measured it out. And to that, I'm going to add my non-dairy milk. I'm using almond milk because that's what I like, but any non-dairy milk you like is fine. One cup of unsweetened applesauce, which you can buy just about every store or make yourself. Apple cider vinegar which is also available pretty much everywhere now. And the recipe calls for maple syrup. I don't ever have maple syrup, so I'm using date syrup. They're interchangeable. Either one is fine. You can always substitute one liquid sweetener for another. Now this has to rest for about 20 minutes until we can add the other ingredients. I have my oven preheated to 375. I'm gonna just mix that together. You know what, it called for some vanilla and I forgot to get that out. So I'm gonna get that right now. I don't care for vanilla extract because vanilla extract has either alcohol or sugar in it. So I like to use the pure vanilla bean powder and you can use it in the same amount. So I'm just gonna add that to that. And it smells so good. And I'm gonna just let this rest. Alexa set an alarm for 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna move on to the next recipe. Now, one of the things I love to do, whether it's Thanksgiving or not, is batch cook. And so I'm gonna be making this wonderful side dish for my Thanksgiving meal. It's a roasted root vegetable at medley. And so talking about doing things in advance, what I did is it has so many different vegetables and some of them are harder because they're root vegetables like rutabaga, turnip, purple carrots, actually carrots of all colors are in here. And so you, I needed to steam them in advance. So I did that this morning. I used my little steamer basket, which I actually did in my pressure cooker, but you could do it on the stove. So right there, this is something I could have done yesterday if I had had room in my fridge, but this is just going to save me so much time when I roast these vegetables. And then they had other vegetables that went in this like fennel and something called celeriac. I guess it's celery root, never saw it, never heard it, couldn't find it, had to go to four stores. But these are things that didn't need to be roasted. So I also cut these up in advance. But the first thing I'm gonna do is make my marinade. And so again, I always have things in my bowl and measure them. And here I have arrowroot and rosemary. Those are the seasonings, rosemary that is in this dish. Arrowroot is a natural mash not national, it's a natural thickener. And then I'm going to whisk all the other ingredients that go in this marinade. Now, this is way more than the recipe calls for because I made about a quadruple recipe because I like having leftovers, you know, cook once, eat many times. So you would not, not necessarily have this much volume, but I, I quadrupled this recipe. So in the bowl with the arrowroot and the rosemary, I have lemon juice. I'm a little bit lazy. I buy the organic bottled lemon juice, but you certainly could choose your own. I'm using date syrup. As I mentioned, I don't have any maple syrup, but they're completely interchangeable, at least in my opinion, in recipes. I like date syrup because it, it has a nice taste and also I could make it myself if I wanted to. And balsamic vinegar. Now, your recipe is gonna taste differently depending on what balsamic vinegar you use. The brand that I love is called California Balsamic. You don't have to use this brand, but I'm gonna recommend if you like things a little bit thick and syrupy, you use a reduced balsamic vinegar. Most balsamic vinegars, and by the way, while I'm talking, I'm just gonna whisk the ingredients for the marinade together. Most balsamic vinegar is very tart, very sharp, and very runny, and it's about 6% acidity. But those that have been reduced, and you could reduce balsamic vinegar yourself, but it takes about 45 minutes, these have 4% acidity. There should be no sugar added. Any sweetness will come from the grapes. And it's just, to me, it has a, just a nicer taste. I find that 6% is just too sharp for my palate. Very easy to whisk these ingredients together. And then into this big bowl, I'm going to add 
my already steamed root vegetables. And I mentioned I have carrots of all four colors here, purple, yellow, white, and orange. I have rutabaga, I have turnip. If you haven't tried rutabaga and turnip, they are fantastic, even on their own, just steamed. And I have beets. So I steam these until soft. I actually did seven minutes in my Instant Pot in the steamer basket. And then I'm going to add the other vegetables that are in this dish. It called for a bag of frozen pearl onions. It called for some mushrooms, something called celeriac, if I'm pronouncing it right, which turns out to be celery root and fennel. And these did not have to be steamed in advance. And so now I'm gonna just mix this up so that it's covered in the delicious marinade. And you know, truthfully, roasted vegetables, you know, you could even roast them without a delicious marinade. They're so good when you roast them because it brings out the natural sweetness and it caramelizes the vegetables, especially if you're not someone that enjoys eating vegetables on a regular basis, you might enjoy them if you roast them or even if you air fry them. You know, I probably could do this in the air fryer, but I'm gonna follow the recipe and put it on a baking sheet at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. In 15 minutes, I'm going to you know, move it around in the oven. I'm using something called a nonstick silicone baking mat on my baking tray. You could also use parchment paper, but I find that with parchment paper, it's a little bit wasteful to the environment. And also with parchment paper, I find that things sometimes stick. So you can see I have a nice glaze on these vegetables. If I were to use just a regular standard balsamic, it would be a lot runnier and I think it wouldn't stick as well. But of course with the arrowroot on there, that is providing thickness. So now I'm gonna just place these on my trays. I might not be able to roast all of these at once because I'm doing more so that I'll have leftovers, but I can fit two trays in at a time and that won't be a problem. Now I will tell you, if you're following along and you already have the recipe, it did call for garlic. I did not put it in because I ran out and that's okay because I feel there's enough deliciousness in here that you won't miss the garlic, especially because I made an additional recipe for tonight's dinner. I just made some garlic roasted mashed potatoes. And so I feel like, you know, we don't wanna have any overkill with the garlic. So we just wanna spread it out leaving a little bit of room. And again, the thing about forks over knives recipes is if I didn't, I couldn't have found the celery root, it would have been just as delicious. It would have been fine. You can make substitutes. And there's a little button where you can actually multiply it by two, by four, by a half. So it takes the guesswork out of measuring, especially if like me, you're dyslexic and really bad at math. So. That's a feature that I really appreciate. By steaming the hard root vegetables in advance, basically what I've done is just cut down on the roasting time because otherwise it would have taken at least 45 minutes, if not up to an hour to roast those very hard root vegetables. All right? And it looks like I have enough- AJ, can I cut you off for a second? Oh, please, always. Okay, um, so you said at the beginning of this process that you, um, you use the weekly meal plan yourself. I love it. Uh, okay, so what value do you get out of it? I'm, I'm curious because I've been using it myself and I, I think it's fantastic. But I, I get inspiration because I tend to be a very simple eater. I eat the same thing for lunch every day, but that, if I did that for dinner, my husband would be very bored. So I get inspiration because I, you know, I get variety and I, and I, I get simplicity. So those are three things when you're you busy go. that are very, very important. Yeah, I, I think especially if you're committed to eating a whole food plant based diet for a long period of time, uh, you can end up eating the same foods over and over again, which is fine. But adding a little bit of diversity here and there to get you new flavors, new textures, new creations is always fun. Can't go wrong with it. And I love Thursdays when it comes out every week. And it's like, oh, what have they got new today? So I'm going to pop these in my preheated oven. It's been preheating to 375 degrees. In 15 minutes, I'm going to stir it around. Alexa, send an alarm for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. How did we ever tell the time before Alexa? Alexa, how many minutes on the first timer? The other thing I love about the Forks Over Knives meal planners, I, I know a lot of people, I have the Forks Over Knives app, which is great. It's very helpful when you're in the store. The thing is, is when I'm cooking in the kitchen, I don't like to use my phone. It gets all kind of smushy. So I like that I can 
print the recipes out. And I don't print it out every time. I've made this one before, so it stays in my little file. Alexa, how many minutes on the first timer? You have 14 minutes left on your 15 minute timer. Okay, but well, the other one's probably expired. Okay, so we're ready to complete our cake. So this is called an apple polenta cake with a cherry compote. And it holds for lining the pan with a piece of parchment paper. This is gonna make it so much easier to peel off when you have the apples. I, I'm using the spring form pan because it actually catches it. So if you only had a regular baking pan, it would be absolutely fine. But the spring form pan is kind of cool because it made it really easy to do this. So what I'm going to do is take the apples and line them in a fan-like position. So I have this apple cutter that I really like. Most apple cutters have eight segments. This has 16, so it makes it much easier. These are the opal apples. These are yellow. You could use any apple you want. I like these when they're available. And I'm going to cut it into 16 segments. This calls for two apples, so I'll have 32 segments, and I'll show you how to do it in a fan. I've done this with green apples when I've made it before, and I've also done it with red, the Envy being my favorite. Usually just get whatever apple is on sale and organic. So I love this even when I'm just eating an apple because then I get 16 pieces, it's much easier to eat. Okay. Alrighty, so then I'm going to line it in a fan, but you start in the middle. That's how you get most of the pieces in, if not all of them. So we're just doing this. I like to do this when I make apple pie too. I like to put an apple fan on it because it's just really pretty. I mean, this is not a sickly, sickly sweet dessert. I mean, but I don't like things that are super sweet anymore. If you wanted it sweeter, you know, you could probably a little bit more of the sweetener to it. So it's almost like a starburst. You see what I'm doing there? And then I'm going to make another row. And this will look very pretty. It's almost like doing a pineapple upside down cake, but with apple. And I'll just fill in any area of the parchment paper. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, honestly. I'm not, I'm more about speed than perfection, to be honest. And then what we're going to do is our, the liquid part of our cake that has been resting with the applesauce, the plant milk, the polenta, the apple cider vinegar, and the vanilla. Now what we're going to do is add to it the dry ingredients, which I also pre-measured in advance. I like this cake because it really doesn't not it really doesn't have flour. This white is is the arrowroot again, the thickener. It calls for a small amount of almond flour, which is really just ground almonds, a quarter of a cup, a half a cup of oat flour. I actually just used rolled oats because I just my blender had I had been making salad dressing this morning. My blender was wet and I it, it wouldn't have browned the oats and it, it, it works fine. I've done it that way before. Just need to find my whisk. I'll get another one. That whisk go? I was whisking a minute ago. Oh, here it is. Nope. Well, I don't have a whisk, so I'll use a spatula. So we're just gonna mix that together. I love it that you don't have to get out a big mix master or KitchenAid or anything. You don't need an electronic device to make this cake. I'm just gonna mix it together. Oh yeah, it had baking it had baking powder and baking soda. Sorry, that white was not arrowroot. It was baking powder and baking soda, which by the way, if you are following the strictly no salt diet, you can absolutely get sodium free. And now I'm just gonna pour it over the top. It kind of bubbles because when you have apple cider vinegar with baking powder or baking soda, that's kind of like your egg in plant-based bacon. That looks so good. Yeah, this takes this takes about an hour to bake. So don't worry. I already made one in advance. So you're going to get to see the finished product. The, there's a question in the chat box. Uh, somebody <laughs> wants to know if um, you can mail them that cake when it's done cooking. 
you know, it's funny you say that because I used to mail my cakes actually once mail one to Dr. Furman in dry ice, but it's very expensive. Alexa, send an alarm for one hour. You know what, Charles? Second time, one hour. Since we're already here at the island, I think I'm going to Furman. No. Since we're already at the island, before we go to the oven, I think I'll do the recipe that is here just so we don't have to move the computer so much. So every Thanksgiving, in my opinion, has to have a cranberry relish. This is probably the easiest cranberry relish you will ever experience. And the um, there's also one question for you here, <laughs> um, which you could touch on at some point, which is, Susan, she says, what kinds of things can be prepped ahead besides the cranberry sauce? Okay. So cranberry sauce for sure can be made the night before. I think, I'm going to be honest, I think everything could be made the night before. I was everything. just going to say, yeah. Heat it up. I really do believe that 100%, at least the meal that we're doing right now. I don't see why not. And if you can't make it the night before, at least the components can be prepped. So everything can be chopped and measured for sure. But I believe that everything can be done the day or the night before. So the nice thing is, is this is my recipe and it's actually in the Parks Overnight's meal planner. It's a cranberry relish I developed about 10 or 11 years ago because I don't want to put sugar and most cranberry relishes, whether you buy them canned or make them yourself have quite a bit, maybe even a cup of sugar and the cooked ones you have to cook on the stove for an hour. But these raw cranberry relishes taste, takes less than five minutes, which is why I call it five minute cranberry relish. Very easy to get cranberries this time of year in the store. I'm using a 12 ounce bag. If you had a 16 ounce bag, that would be fine. You know, when you see cranberries on sale, like at Winco, when they have them for 25 cents, I just stock up and I keep them in my freezer because 25 cents is a really, really good price. So this basically has three ingredients, cranberries, oranges, and dates, and chia seeds if you want it a little bit thicker. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to break up the cranberries. My cranberries have no sugar. They are very, very tart. I'll do it in there. Then I'm going to add my oranges. But first, I'm going to zest them. I prefer a zester to a microplane. This is what a zester looks like. If you're, if you're somebody that's ever shaved, that's the kind of motion you want to get the zest off. When you zest, you wanna go around the orange or whether you're zesting a lemon or a lime, you don't wanna repeat where you went because when you go over that white part, that is called the pith and it's very bitter. And again, if you didn't buy an organic orange, you maybe you wouldn't wanna zest it, but that's okay. It will be very flavorful. Even if you don't add the zest, it just adds a little bit more uh, flavor if you can do that, but it's not 100% essential. If you don't have a zester, you can use a tool called a microplane. I just like the long shreds better than the little fine shavings you get from a microplane. I made this last week for a dessert recipe and I did not zest it mainly because I forgot and it came out perfect. So there we have that. Now there's a whole bunch of different ways to peel an orange. We're going to have a couple of tools that do that. But since all I need is the orange part, I'm just gonna cut it into four segments and then put them in. And I could have done this in advance, but then I would not have been able to show you the zesting part. Now, as far as dates, how many? The truth is it's to taste because everyone has a different threshold with how sweet they like things. My husband likes it pretty sweet. So you might see me putting in quite a few dates. And again, cranberry relish, it's a relish. So you're, you know, you're not eating, hopefully, you know, cupfuls of it. It's a condiment for your entree. So think about it that way. What's nice about cranberry relish is if there's any leftover, there's other things you can do with it. So for example, if you're somebody that enjoys oatmeal or any other hot grain cereal in the morning, it's a wonderful thing to put on top of your warm oatmeal. It also, believe it or not, very good on banana ice cream. If you ever make banana ice cream in your Ninja Creamy or your Yonanas, a little cranberry relish on it this time of year is fantastic. So when I look for the oranges, I'm looking for ones that hopefully have a lot of, you know, kind of juice, not, not dry oranges. I've done this with blood oranges which are very pretty, as well as the Caracara orange. Sometimes you can get really good prices on those, even organic at Costco, if you have one near you. I have also used, believe it or not, dried pears instead of dates in this uh, occasionally. 
also very good. And sometimes I even put cherries in my cranberry relish. I'm not doing that today because our dessert has a compote made of cherries, but again, this is more of like a template recipe. You can flavor it how you like. People have told me they've added a little lime juice to this, a little ginger. Okay, just rinse my hand. It's a really, really easy recipe. I mean, if you've ever cooked cranberry relish from scratch, you know that this is so much easier. So we're not gonna process this again with the S blade. And then we're going to add our dates. Post again. Now, you don't have to add the chia seeds. This is not even in the recipe. This is just something I started doing. Because what, one of the things you can do with the recipe we're making, the loaf, I'm not doing this tonight, but I've done this in the past where you take the loaf and then you frost it with mashed potatoes. And then you put the, the like the cranberry sauce kind of in the middle. It kind of looks like a, like a, like a dessert cake. And so when I put the chia seeds in, it makes it thicker. It's not going to be runny. So I'll probably end up putting about two tablespoons in. So these are, well, supposedly pitted dates. We know from experience that they're not always pitted from Costco. So great price, by the way, they've been on sale. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze each one as it goes in, just to make sure. I prefer using the whole date to, you know, the date syrup whenever possible, because it's got the fiber and everything. So let's just hope there's not a pit. Even when I do this, I always, my hands are pretty small, but last time I did this, it was four aged handfuls of dates. Again, we're gonna do this to taste. So when it does that, that usually means it hit a pit because it stopped and it did. Even with all the squeezing, we found a pit. Since I had to open the food processor, I may as well just put my two tablespoons of chia seeds in now. If for some reason you wanted it more liquidy, for whatever reason, you could always add a couple of tablespoons of water or orange juice. Let's hope there's no more pit now. It's not closed tight. No, it's not closed. Okay. There we go. Uh, no good? No. Okay. <laughs> Three times the charm. Just got this gravel. It's very good, very powerful. What's going on? Well, can't I get like there if you just push it there? Uh, yeah, that's good. No, it's not oh. actually. Ah. This never happens when I'm not a live audience. Okay, this don't be nervous. There's a lot. There we go. Uh oh, we having technical difficulties over here. No, we got it. Finally, we got it. There, All right. we, go. there we go. Nice work. And we are done. And I'm going to put it in a pretty bowl. Chill. Let's see if I can find that pretty bowl for you right now. I actually do have some in the fridge because I did make this recently. Let's see, is this about the right size? I think so. You want to try to make your food look pretty if you can, especially if it's plant-based food. I'll show you some that I made a few days ago. And you can see how in the fridge it just sets up. Might as well mix them all together. Old and the new. There's my blade. Alexa off. So that is my timer to stir the vegetables, which I'm going to do after I get this in here. And then we'll have about 15 more minutes. That's perfect. They're just the perfect amount for this size dish. 
look at that. And this will last several days in your fridge. I've never tried to freeze it. So I can't honestly tell you if it would freeze well, but there you have it really in, in just minutes. Okay, let me go stir. Half of these here, and then we're going to move on to the oven and make our millet loaf. So what I'm going to do now, in 15 minutes, is I'm going to change racks. Stir this around a little. Mm, it smells really good. Alexa, set an alarm for 15 minutes, and we're going to go over to the oven, and we're going to make a millet loaf. Okay, so you're going to go to my left. All right. So now we're really going to cook. I can heat and everything. This millet loaf is delicious. And one of the things I love about it, excuse me, Bailey, I'm so sorry. First thing you got to do is move your dog. Okay. <laughs> is that I, I have a lot of friends that have either legume allergies or intolerances and most loaves seem to be lentil or bean. This is not that. It, it's made with millet. Millet is an ancient grain. It's a whole grain. It's also known as bird seed because I guess birds do eat this. If you haven't tried it, give it a chance because it is just really an underused grain and really delicious in my opinion. I'm just going to turn that a little further on. And it's great just like in place of rice, but it's really wonderful the way it is going to hold together for the loaf. So I have to cook it. I've never cooked it before. I started making this recipe. I mean, I cooked it in the rice cooker or the pressure cooker. I've never cooked it on the stove, but I realized how easy it is. So right now I, in a pot, I have my water and I'm just going to bring that to boil. So I want to start sauteing the onions. So I'm going to get a little bit closer, but I'm using my pan here on high heat, I'm preheating it. And the way you know it's ready, always, since we're cooking without oil, you can certainly use broth, always have some kind of liquid nearby so that you can put it in the pan if it starts to feel like it's getting dry or stick. So you just take a little bit of water like that, and it's not ready yet. But once once the bead dances around, oh, that, oh I think it is now, look, yeah. Once the water dances around in a bead, it's hot enough. So I'm pretty busy. So I do take some shortcuts and I bought my onions at Rayleigh's already chopped. It just saves me a lot of time and aggravation because I'm so sensitive to onions when I cut them, but it's just not worth all the tears to me. You can also buy them cut up in the refrigerator section in plastic, but you know, when you buy them frozen like this, you actually can save money. I've seen them for 99 cents. That's what really goes in the house. So we're just gonna let the onions hang out here. It probably might take a little bit longer when they have been frozen because there's a little bit extra water. So we're just gonna move it around. This is a saute pan I got many years ago from Pampered Chef. I love it. Um, I don't know if it's still available, but it's so great because of the, the high side. So we're just gonna let this hang out for a minute and do a few other steps. I need to dissolve some miso paste in water. And by the way, I, I pretty much double just about every recipe except for the cake and the rolls. So I have my miso paste measured out and I need to dissolve that in hot water, which I'm heating up right now. Waiting for my water to boil because it's gonna take about 25 minutes for the millet to cook. I did try to boil it, in the end, but you never know. So this uses some fresh herbs that are perfect for Thanksgiving, specifically thyme and sage. So thyme comes off the little stem as you pull it. This is what sage looks like. It looks like a leaf. And one of the things I love to use are these herb scissors. This was actually a gift for Dr. Hans Deal because it, what it does is it, it's great for things like this and basil. It makes these long shreds all at the same time and it's just an easy way to do it. So it's just, for me, it's a little easier than using a knife and I have these little shreds. So these are my fresh herbs that go in here. What I love about Forks Over Knives is if they use salt, it's very little and usually it's to taste. 
and so this recipe is no exception. So I personally just don't like to use salt. And so I'll use one of my favorite salt-free seasonings like either Benson's Table Tasty or Salacious at the very end. One of the ingredients it calls for is nutmeg. So I have that nearby. And of course, garlic. I have this cool little tool from Tupperware that I love. And all you do is pull the fork and it minces the garlic really finely. When I use my garlic press, I find it infinitely more difficult to clean. And this way, I also get a workout as long as I change arms in between. All right, so nice and finely chopped. I'm not gonna add the garlic yet though, because I find that garlic tends to burn. So I wait until my onions are done. So now I need to dissolve the miso in the hot water. You get miso paste in the refrigerated section of the grocery store. They even have it at Winco, believe it or not. So I need to get a little, yeah. just use this to dissolve it. And then when it's time, I will add that, but my onion is not done yet. My water. Yeah, my water's boiling. So I'm going to add my millet. And then I want to bring it to a boil again. And it will take between 20 and 25 minutes to cook. Now, a lot of people are saying, what can I do in advance? Well, according to the Pork Silver Knives recipe, you don't want to cook the millet in advance for this recipe because they say it tends to dry out and it won't make the loaf as you know stuck together as it should be. So for this particular recipe, I wouldn't cook the millet in advance, only when you're ready to bake it. But you could do it the day before. And I have one loaf I already made prepared. So this is nice and smooth and ready to go. Chef AJ, are there any other alternatives to millet? For this well, recipe? I, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, I want to say yes, but the truth is, since I haven't tried it, I don't want to steer the person wrong, you know, and say, well, yeah, because I don't definitively know what you could use. I mean, is it a millet allergy or they just don't like it or they can't find it because I, I you know, it, it, the whole thing is it's called a millet loaf and that's what it's based on. A good millet loaf, okay. a very nutty flavor. It's a, it's a very good flavor. I mean, I would like to say, yeah, use quinoa, use rice, but the truth is if I haven't tried it, I don't want to have you go to all the trouble and expense of doing everything and finding out it doesn't work, you know? How, um, how dare you be so conscientious? Well, no, the thing is, is if, if you really don't like millet, then I'm sure there's many other loaf recipes you can do, you know, but correct, I correct. love millet and millet really, people, people need to give it a chance because it's such a delicious, nutty, full grain. Um, yeah, for sure. So that they can see the, the, maybe come a little closer. So we're just waiting for this, you know, we, this is just going to take a few minutes, you know, we got to get the, the water out of here. Okay, so now that this is boiling, I'm going to turn this down to medium heat. Alexa, set an alarm for 20 minutes. Okay. I'm just not, I, I should have named the timers like she asked. So I'm just gonna stir my millet and this will cook fairly quickly. It's a, it's a very small grain, so it doesn't take that much time to cook. So turn it down a little more. So we just wait. So if you have any questions, uh, we're, we're basically yeah. just on the onions now. Okay. So here's a question. When it comes to the millet loaf, is there a substitute for the miso paste? Um, well, if you're soy so, so here's the thing, you know, um, I generally don't use miso, uh, but it was in this recipe. And I, my understanding is it's in place of using salt because it's a, uh, it's a better way to get your salt because it, it's a fermented food. So my feeling is, is if you can't have it, leave it out. I don't know of a substitute for miso, to be honest. Um, so effectively, what we're looking for is something that adds a salty flavor. Is that right? Yeah. So, so, so I would say, so my two favorite salt-free seasonings are Benson's Table Tasty 
and salacious from local spicery. These have no added sodium whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I feel like um, because this is a pork sour knives recipe, I want to follow it, you know, to the recipe. So really the only substitution that I've made in any of these recipes is a date syrup for maple syrup, because, you know, I just don't want to buy maple syrup. Maple syrup is very expensive, uh, believe it or not. Is that right? Because it's, so, it's definitely not that you can buy date syrup at Walmart. It's, it's a lot cheaper. Have you ever tried uh, celery salt? I, I actually don't know if that's a good substitute well, or not. So, so celery seed, celery is inherently salty because it's a green vegetable. And you know, yep. I, I actually have uh, taken celery and put it in a food processor and dehydrated. And, and that does taste like salt, but celery salt actually is still salt. So, you know, you can get ah. that are, you, I don't know if you can see, but it's starting to brown, which is what I want. And I haven't added any liquid yet. You can actually get miso pastes uh, that are much lower in sodium. There's two brands. One is called Cold Mountain. One is called South River. It, those are available at your stores or online that actually have a lot lower sodium. It's about 110 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon because miso paste does vary widely. So you can see it, that I might, it's getting a little bit like trying to stick right there. So I'm just going to use my, my miso liquid as my liquid for the pan. And I'm just trying to get a nice brown on the, uh, on the onion. Now, if I had the time, I could totally caramelize these. You don't need oil to do that. But at some point I want to finish this recipe. So, and like I said, because I use frozen onion, it's gonna be a little bit longer than if I cut one up and used it from fresh. But the way you saute without oil is you have some liquid, could be broth, could be water. In this case, it's the miso with the water nearby. And you just add it a couple of tablespoons at a time. And the onion adds just so much flavor. I'm gonna show you a little trick that I did because I know like a lot of times for Thanksgiving, people have kids and grandkids and families. And I'm gonna bake this in a loaf pan. But what I did yesterday is I also baked it in a silicone muffin tin. And I have the cutest little miniature millet loaves, which you could use not only with this recipe, but really with any loaf recipe that you have. There we go. I got some more questions for you while we're while we're sure. doing some time. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Let's go back to the cake. The now cake. that it's in the oven. Um. Mm -hmm. Are polenta and cornmeal interchangeable? Are they the same thing? I believe that polenta is a little bit ground more finely. Mm -hmm. I could ask Alexa that if you want, but I, I do believe you want to get polenta. You do believe you want to get, okay, great. Um, next question, Beth says, can I replace almond flour with any other type of flour other than white flour? Yeah, I don't think, why not? I think that the reason almond flour, and again, this isn't my recipe, but I could ask my friend who wrote it, Darshana, is that she wanted maybe a little bit of richness for the nut. So if, if you can do nuts, you could probably use any nut and, and not even buy it as a flour, but like I actually saw it at Rayleigh's yesterday, hazelnut flour. If you can do nuts, you could take a quarter cup of any nut, walnut, hazelnut, and use that. My guess is if I wasn't going to use a little bit of almond flour, I would just use all oats. So I would do three fourths of a cup of oats. That's probably what I would do. Oh, very cool. And, and okay. again, these are holiday recipes. So I don't mind it for me. I, I mean, I'm going to eat these, what, once a year. So if I have a little miso and a little nut in a recipe, I'm okay with it because I, I know that it's, you know, it's not my everyday fare. So this is getting to be really good. I'm just going to pour all of it in now. And then I'm going to add my garlic. And keep cooking. With garlic, I don't even worry how much I put in. I mean, there's no, to me, there's no such thing as too much garlic in a recipe. I just put a lot of it in. I'm going to turn my heat down a little bit. I'm just going to add a little water. Get every last bit of miso out and every last bit of garlic out. This little tool is so helpful. I think it's 
tools can really help you make delicious meals quickly. So the nutritional yeast in this recipe is optional. I'm using a non-fortified brand. I'm going to add it. It also gives it sort of a nutty flavor. I'm going to add my fresh herbs. So you're you're saying that the nutritional yeast adds a nutty flavor because I've heard it add a cheesy flavor. But a cheesy nutty, you know, they call it umami. It's kind of like a like a much like mushrooms are umami, like just a kind of a depth, you know. But they sure. say on the meal planner that it is completely optional. So if not, not everybody uses it. I'm just doing a little bit of water to get the sides all done. There we go. I wish you could smell this because it does smell like Thanksgiving with the fresh sage and thyme. It just smells wonderful. And this is basically ready. I'm just waiting for the millet to finish cooking now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the millet to this. I mean, this almost to me smells like a very rich gravy that you could put on something. I'm gonna, Alexa off. I'm gonna go check my vegetables in a minute, but I am now turning the heat off here. And it says, oh, I didn't put my nutmeg in, called for an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. Again, another one of those fall flavors, but I'm doing a double recipe. So we're gonna put two eighths of a teaspoon, which is one quarter. It says salt and pepper to taste. I'm allergic to black pepper. So instead of salting it, just a little Benson's table tasty. And one thing I just like to do is because it's Thanksgiving, I just like to add just a little bit more poultry seasoning on it. And then as soon as that millet is done, we're going to put the millet in this, mix it together and put it in the loaf pan. And it's going to bake at 350 for 45 minutes. Let's see how that's doing. Turn it up, these pans, this pan was given to me by Chef Bravo. He didn't like my pans when he visited me, so he got me new ones. So this will probably take a few more minutes, but you know what, I have something I can do in the meantime. So I'm just gonna move this aside and we're gonna make the compote. So compote is a fruit dish that we're going to be putting on the polenta cake. So I have already measured in my pans, my applesauce, my water, and my spices, which are cinnamon, clove, and something called star anise, which I couldn't find. And so it said it was okay to omit it. So I'm just gonna start heating this up. This is the loaf pan that I'm going to be using. Silicone is great because you don't have to then use parchment paper and nothing sticks. So I'm a big fan of it. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna cook the applesauce, the water, and the cinnamon, and the cloves with the cherries. I'm doubling this recipe because my husband loves this. He'll eat this just for dessert without the cake. So I'm gonna add my defrosted or mostly defrosted cherries. And we're just gonna cook this until thick and syrupy. And then once it starts to cook down and get thick, I'm just gonna take a potato masher, which is there a potato masher over there? And mash it. I, again, I, I have all the food ready. The only thing I didn't do in advance, well, actually I had the cranberry sauce. So you're gonna to get to see the finished product so you don't have to hang out during the baking time. But we're just cooking this down and then we're gonna smash it. And then as it chills, it's gonna get even thicker. So hopefully our millet is just about ready so that we can show you how to do it in a pan. It's almost ready, not quite. Let me show you though something real quick. Oh, I forgot one ingredient. I'll have to go get it. It called for some tomato sauce. So look how cute these are, these little millet loaves. And what I like to do is take an ice cream scoop and then put mashed potato on top and you can put gravy if you want. But this is cool, especially if you have kids and everybody can get an individual serving and you can just get a silicone thing. Now, I forgot one ingredient. Let me go grab it. It calls for a quarter cup of ketchup in the loaf, ketchup or tomato sauce. So Dylan Holmes from Will Your World makes a completely SOS free ketchup. I didn't have any. So there are two brands you can get even in the least where I live, the regular store that have a small amount of sodium, but absolutely no sugar. I like this one better taste wise, but this one's pretty good too. 
So, Chef Ajay, why, why would there be ketchup in the loaf? That seems a little meatloaf, odd. Because meatloaf traditionally had ketchup in it, not it. That's just how, at least that's how my oh, mom Oh, smart. But I didn't realize what, that. Okay, good point. Do you know what's even better than ketchup is barbecue sauce. That's even better. Yeah, okay. So, so if it wasn't that. Thanksgiving, I would do, um, I would do barbecue sauce if I was making this just for another time of year. So I forgot to put this in. I got to see how much it was. I got to go look at the recipe, guys. Sorry, I forgot it, but don't worry. It's not too late. That was a quarter cup. Let's see uh, I'm just going to mention a couple of things while you're doing that here. Um, I think there's some questions in the chat box uh, about the meal plan, the meal planner. So the meal planner has a 14 day free trial. There's some people who are sort of confused about uh, how long that free trial lasts. So if you're interested, you can get the 14 day free trial, which means you don't have to put your credit card in at the beginning. If you choose to upgrade at the 14 day point or before that, that at that point, you would then pay for it. Um, and you can also scale the, the scale up or scale down the um, quantities according to how many people you have to feed. So if it's just for you, enter one person. If it's for you, plus your husband or wife, plus your kids, you can enter three, four, five. And then, you know, the number of ingredients will scale accordingly. Um, and there are new meal plans that are going to be sent to you every single week. And that's the beauty of the meal plan is that it's changing all the time. You can always go backwards and get old recipes and you can always find the new recipes every single week so that you don't have to get bored. You can feel like you're constantly, you know, diversifying your, uh, your, your repertoire, if you will. So I hope that answers your questions. Keep going, keep going. Uh, the millet is almost ready. It's just be a couple more minutes till all the water is absorbed. So I forgot to put this in, but that's okay. I just stirred in the ketchup. Now it doesn't have to be ketchup, by the way. The recipe says tomato sauce or ketchup. But since I had the ketchup, I put it in. And then you're gonna put the ketchup on the top too when you bake it. If I forgot this, it would probably would have been absolutely fine. So we just got a couple more minutes on the millet. We're gonna mix the millet in. And it's going to bake and always make sure that when you're doing anything like a loaf or things like lasagna those kind of things have to rest they say at least 10 minutes i would say maybe even more because if you do if you don't then when you try to invert it or take it out of the pan it could fall apart but if you just give it some time it will definitely invert easily and that's another reason that you can do this in advance charles i don't know if you can get up here to show how thick this is getting the compote as i cook this the applesauce water and cherries it's getting nice and thick just like we want it. And this is gonna be the sauce for our polenta cake. And then we're just gonna take a potato masher and do it right in the pan and smash those cherries. And again, this will thicken as it cools. This could be a sauce for your oatmeal. It could be a sauce for your fruit or banana ice cream. But in this case, we're gonna be using it. And you're gonna see the difference in what it looks like when it's made the day before and chilled. And it's, it's, it's almost jam-like. So we can work that out even after it cooks. I don't know where you guys all live, but at least by me, frozen cherries are available all year round, fresh not. And frozen cherries are often much, much cheaper than fresh when they are available. And they tend to be pretty sweet. And there we go. My guess is the millet is ready. Let's look. If not, we're talking like a minute or two. Look at that, almost done. We just got a little bit more. I'm gonna raise the heat just a skosh. Just got a little bit more water. We've got to cook out of that. If I didn't do that, it would increase the baking time. Let me go check my vegetables and see how they're doing. Uh oh, oven is closed. This door is open. That's not good. Is that why it wasn't even cooking? So I think I lost a little bit of baking time. Sorry, we can't hear that. You say that one more time? You lost a little bit of what? A little bit of baking time because it, I have this new oven it wasn't, uh, it wasn't closed all the way. So it paused it. You would think it would have told me, right? So the oven wasn't closed all the way, which means that you lost right. a little bit of time. Okay, so you're going to have to cook it a little longer, you think? have to cook it a little longer. Let me just show you the loaf, though. And what I'm going to do, this is my finished one. And by the way, these are great if you do eat bread, if you do eat sandwiches, chilled, sliced. It's like, it's like meatloaf but obviously without the meat and the egg and the breadcrumbs, no breadcrumbs in here. And th this was a double recipe. So when I make the single recipe, it's not as high. And then I sometimes frost it with mashed potato. If you like barbecue sauce, 
that would be delicious on this instead of the ketchup or the tomato sauce. Yum. This is good. I like what I see. It's funny, you mentioned meatloaf. I, I literally was trying to think about the last time I ate meatloaf and it was you know, somewhere around the early 2000s. Um, it's funny how your taste buds change over the course of time. So when you're first, when you're new to a plant-based diet, a lot of the times you crave the things that you have been eating. So you try and replicate the textures of things like BLTs and macaroni and cheese and meatloaf and beyond. And then as you become more and more experienced, you say, you know what? I don't really need to, need to try and replicate those foods. I'm just going to eat plant-based foods and enjoy the plant-based foods for what they are rather than trying to, you know, create a non-plant-based, uh, sorry, replicate a non-plant-based um, recipe. I agree with that. So my, comp my compote is done. So all I'm going to do now is just, I took, put the lid on, I turned the heat off and then I'm going to let it cool down to room temperature and then I'm going to chill it and I'll show you what the finished one looks like. So basically, ah, just need to get this a little bit. It's so close to being done. There's just a little, I'm going to turn the heat up because it's, it's like we're minutes away from showtime here because all I have to do, I'll take the lid off. It'll get done in a second. And then I'll just mix this in this and put it in the thing. And then I'm going to show you the cake. Okay. You can see. Uh, Chef AJ, question for you here. When it comes to the actual millet loaf itself, um, <clears throat> Dustin says that he's tried it before, but it falls apart. Really? So how okay. do you prevent it from falling apart? Is there some magic that you do that nobody else knows? So, so mine didn't fall apart and I've made it one, two, three. This will be my fourth time making it. So a couple of things. One of the things I would ask is, did you do what the recipe says, which is cook the millet and then immediately put it in here and bake it? Because it actually says on the recipe, listen to this, because millet loses its binding power as it cools, be sure to put the mixture in the baking dish as soon as you finish incorporating the spices. So my first guess would, or I'm just asking, is it possible that maybe you cooked the millet in advance or it was chilled? because it, it does say in the recipe that you have to do that right away. That would be my first guess. Good call, great call, okay. That would be my only guess too, uh, because believe me, I would have rather had this cooked in advance and cooled, but at least according to the recipe, it said it won't work. It loses its binding power when you do that. Okay, so, sorry guys. It just, you know what they say, a wash pot never boils. I've got the key. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a couple of questions for you here. So now I'm going to transfer, I'm going to transfer the millet into the bigger pan right now. I'm going to turn the heat off. It is done. Boom. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Millet can be eaten for breakfast. I mean, everybody eats oats, but you know, I mean, try millet. Millet's really good. Unless it's just, it's, it's not available very many places. Like you don't really see it much in restaurants. Uh, sometimes it's even hard to find in stores. I mean, they do have it at stores like Sprouts and Whole Foods, but just, you know, the regular grocery store does not seem to carry things like millet and even buckwheat. So this is perfectly cooked millet on the stove. And then we're going to mix it together and then we're going to put it in the loaf pan. The other thing I would ask is, did he let it rest? I know that the recipe says 10 minutes, but I would let it rest longer. I would let it rest like 30 minutes. What you can do is you pull the little side away from the loaf pan and you can see if anything is sticking, then you definitely do not want to invert it at that time. Uh, the other thing you might want to try is doing smaller versions, doing it in the, in the mini muffin pan and see if that makes it better. So now we're just going to mix this all together. While you're mixing that, here's another question. Um, sure. What, how do like you... If you're the only person that's eating plant-based at your Thanksgiving dinner, how do you, how do you do that without it being all awkward and without feel like you're being interrogated by your dietary it, choices? It's hard. The, I would ask is, are you the only person at your house or their house? Because if it's your house, you know, I always feel like your house, your rules, you know, when we kept kosher growing up, it's like, we didn't, we didn't waver on that for anybody else. But if you're at somebody else's house, you know, if you, I guess it's best to be a gracious guest. And what I would do is offer to bring something and bring something so delicious, not maybe not a millet loaf, if nobody's heard of millet, but maybe something that's just incredibly delicious, like a, like a plant-based pecan pie. Like I have a recipe that just has pecans and dates or just something that's so good. 
if people aren't going to even know that it's plant-based, you know, but it is hard, you know, that's why it's so important, I think, to get community. And right now what I'm just doing is putting it in the loaf pan, all the ingredients together. Uh, it, the holidays can make you feel a little bit lonely and isolated if you're the only one that eats this way. So uh, what we always have done traditionally is in addition to any Thanksgiving that we would have with family where we were invited, we always did a second Thanksgiving, usually the day before with all our plant-based friends and, and usually have a, a potluck or something so that we felt like we could you know, celebrate with the kind of foods that we liked. But it, it is hard. I, I will say if you're the only one doing anything, especially when you're doing something that's so beneficial for your health and for the environment and for the animals and nobody else seems to be interested, it can feel not so great. I don't know. I've been doing it for 45 years. So I guess I'm just kind of used to it by now. But also I tend to make friends with like-minded people. And most of my family's dead because they didn't want to eat this way. To, and I'm not being funny. It's, it's just the truth. They all died of cancer, heart disease, and diabetes very early on. Lost them all. So you know, have to know your why. So there we have it. And the only thing else I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth over the top and then add either the ketchup or the barbecue sauce or the tomato paste. Now, by the way, you don't have to do that. Like I said, you can just keep it unfrosted and, you know, frost it with mashed potatoes or have it plain, but it does make it kind of pretty when it's got the little glaze on top. And it also adds flavor. Get the last bit with this heavy pan. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I cook much more simply in general. And, and by the way, if you think like, oh, this recipe is so hard, not every Forks and Knives recipe has this many steps. Remember, this is Thanksgiving dinner. So this would have this would have filled this if I wanted to do that as well. So I've got this done. And then I'm just going to squeeze the ketchup over the top. I like the squeeze bottle because it makes it easier. And a knife. You have a knife, Charles. I can spread it over the top. It's in the drawer. Okay, it's to the left. All right. Uh, no, it's in the drawer right, right in front right of me. In front of you. Okay. There's a knife. Okay. There we go. My oven is preheating. Spread it over the top. And then we can go to the other island and I'll show them the cake and how I would plate it. And again, if you have a burger recipe you like, like a plant burger or a bean burger, or one made out of lentils or even sweet potatoes, you can absolutely turn that into a holiday loaf or any loaf uh, just by changing the spices. Just realize that it's going to have a longer cooking time than if it was, you know, in burger form. So that looks pretty good to me. It's going in my preheated oven right now. I'm going to be able to take my cake out now. If you want to go to the island, we'll go back and show them everything. Okay. Anybody wants to come clean up my kitchen? You'll get a free dinner. All right. Now I got to get you guys the cake mm. and show you how to plate it and what it looks like. Um, you officially have uh, 137 people volunteering to clean your kitchen. Every in California. <laughs> That's okay. People are willing to travel. So I'm going to get the cake out of the oven now. All right. This is the big reveal. I feel like I've been waiting on pins and needles for this the entire time. So remind us, it was in the oven for how long? How long? So this doesn't look like much because it's an upside down cake. This is the bottom of the cake you're seeing. We do have to let this cool. If I were to take the ring off now, it would collapse. So I'm just gonna keep this at room temperature until I can invert it and plate it. How long was that in the oven for, Chef AJ? I'm gonna say, depending on the, at least 15 minutes. Let's see what it says on the front of the knives for how long they recommend doing it. Um, oh, no, they're saying 30 minutes, but cool in pan 30 minutes, I would want 30 but minutes, okay. I'm not in any hurry because I have another one. I made some mashed potatoes. There's several recipes on the Fork Silver Knives meal planner. So we're gonna have mashed potatoes with this meal. And so the way I would serve this, I'll cut a piece and I'll show you how I'm gonna plate it. And no, I like to mix and match. 
So what, what you could do is you could put the cranberry relish on this cake if you wanted to do that. But since we have the beautiful compote already made, and you can see by refrigerating it, it got nice and thick and it's got the spices that are so familiar at Thanksgiving. So what I would do, some people like to put the sauce on top. I used to be a pastry chef at a restaurant and there was somebody that's their whole job was to plate it. But I kind of like to have it on the bottom, just kind of spread it out. I think people like a lot of sauce. If you make a mistake, you can always get a napkin or a towel. Make it pretty. You could also put it in a squeeze bottle to make dots or lines. And then you can take your knife. I want to be able to get 16, I want to be able to get at least eight slices out of this. So I'm just going to cut the whole thing right now so that I make sure I have enough for everyone. I'm making two of these, so each person will get one eighth. It's amazing how it came together. No eggs, nothing. So I'm just gonna take a piece. Look at that. This would be great for breakfast too. Put it on top. If you have any fresh mint wow. or anything, or want to put some fruit on the plate, you could do that or put it on top. I just like the apples, so I don't like to cover up the apples. And that, that way, having it on the bottom, everybody gets a little bit sauce with every bite. And I, I'm sorry, my, um, my vegetables aren't ready because of the oven being open. But what I can do is show you how another way to plate would be both. Wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait. We have a problem, Chef AJ. Yeah. Um, you know, on the Food Network, when they're done making food, they dig into it and then they show us their face so we can see how much you enjoy it. Are you going to taste the food or are yeah, you just going to pretend like it's good? Definitely taste the cake. I, I, I'm happy to do that. I'm going to I actually, uh, that's why when I put it on it, I, I put like the best looking biggest piece because I actually am going to eat that one. Yep. What I thought I might do is since the vegetables are not ready. Okay. Another way I can plate this is just take the mashed potatoes and put them all the way around, you know? And when I serve it. Oh, so you're doing an ice cream scooper. You're doing a whole bunch of little dollops. I thought this would be kind of cute. And I can still get, I can get the vegetables on a plate, but I thought this would be a, and then I'll heat this up before the guests eat it. I thought this might be a nice presentation. And then everybody can just take a dollop or two. That's smart, actually, that's really good. Yeah, it's fun to do things, but I am gonna taste, I know that the, the meatloaf tastes good. We had it last week for dinner when I was preparing. There we go. Look how cute that looks. Yeah, that's great. Fun way that's, to serve it. That looks awesome. Yeah. It's so funny, these were so, at, just at room temperature, they got so much thicker. You might have to mush these again, Charles, before look at that. Perfect. Oh boy. There we go. Actually, there's room for a couple more. I think this is kind of a fun way to serve it. I have some roasted garlic in here just because I like it. Oh, room for one more scoop, I think. If you want to up the nutrition in your mashed potatoes, you can always add a little bit of steamed cauliflower. Nobody will know. You can always add a little parsnip, things like that. People won't know. I'm going to see how we're doing on the uh, vegetables. Just going to fill in every space. It kind of looks like ice cream, doesn't it? Little scoops. Yeah, that's literally what it reminded me of as soon as you started doing that. But I think what's genius about this is that when people see this on the table and they go to actually have some rather than like having to scoop into like a giant mound of it, you can literally just take one or two balls yeah. 
and just stick it on your plate. And then it's also, that's a pretty smart way to do portion control. Not that it's necessary when you're I think you have diet. to portion control, but you want to make sure there's enough for everybody, you know? That's true. That's true. I'm not worried about them eating too much because of their health. It's just uh, people who eat this way, we tend to eat a lot. We want to make sure there's enough for all the guests. So I, I like this. I kind of like what I did with this. One more. Room for, always room for one more. There we go. So kind of a fun presentation, I think. Amazing. I like that a lot. That's great. So the vegetables, I'll, I will show them to you. Just I don't think they're quite done because of the little glitch. My gloves, my own gloves. Let's see what those look like. That won't over open the oven without All right. Let's see. I don't want to burn myself. Where are my gloves go? Open right here. Okay, I'll show you the vegetables. I want to put them in about 15 more minutes because we lost some time. Oops. And here we go. And you could drizzle these with a little bit of balsamic when you're done, if you like. And so let's taste the cake. I'll let you know if I like it. All right. There we go. There we go. Here's a reveal. Mm. Mm. I love cherry. Anything cherry is really good. So. Mm. And the cake. So are you eating cake before dinner? Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone would know it's polenta. Meaning what? You don't get a strong corn flavor or? Well, no corn flavor at all. It's like, um, how do you explain this? It's like, a, I don't know how to explain it. Good. What, is it, what does it remind you of, if anything? Is there like some non-plant-based pie or cake that it reminds you of? Almost like a sponge cake. Oh, that's interesting. So it's got kind of like a light, airy texture to it? Dense. It's not, it's not super sweet. That's why you want to have the sauce with it. And I bet it would be real. You want to taste this and tell me what you think. That's why you, you want to have the sauce with it because the cake itself, remember there was only a half a cup of sweetener in it. Well, there was a cup of apple sauce, but it's very good. It's very, it's, it's light, but it's dense. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but I can see people taking it like as a to-go breakfast, you know? For sure. Because look at it and even you like it? Yeah, very good. It's not super sweet. But just enough sweetness. But just enough sweetness. <laughs> yeah. But standard American dieters might not like this one because it's not sickly sweet. Because people are used to sugar, fat, and salt. But with the with the cranberry relish, they're not gonna know that it's you know sweet and a date. So you could you could I I assure you could put people this. I have. So thanks so much. I wish you all a very happy, healthy Thanksgiving to you and your loved ones. Check out the meal planner, you know, no risk two weeks. You can always not sign up if you don't like it, but I think you will like it because they always have new recipes and very creative recipes too. And a lot of ethnic recipes, which I find really fun, things I haven't heard of. Absolutely. This is, yeah, this has been super helpful. Actually, as you were going through this, I was thinking to myself, wow, I really want to make this food. So uh, I think I'm going to have a very Chef AJ uh, Thanksgiving uh, <laughs> this year. Uh, and I appreciate you walking through each recipe and showing us exactly what to expect and how to think about constructing these recipes. Because oftentimes I know I feel this, you know, you see a recipe and you, you kind of like follow the directions, but you don't really know because you've never seen somebody else do it before. And you, you're sort of like a little bit guessing, but this is going to be super helpful because it shows us exactly how we can do this.